How is it going? This is James here from James Films, and today I actually have a webcam recording, so you can actually see me as I go through and do this tutorial. This is going to be a bit of a longer one. I've been getting a lot of requests from people to have these more strung out, uh, longer editions of these things, so I'm hoping to uh, take some time here to kind of show you step by step so you can follow along to actually create some of these really cool scenes. So today I'm going to be focusing on uh, making some really cool dunes using a very simple displacement map that I created over in World Creator. And just a shameless plug here, over the next couple weeks and months, I'm going to be uploading every single one of these displacement maps that I create onto my Patreon page. You can get some access over there for just a couple dollars and see all of these files and have access to just tons of great resources. In addition to those displacements, I'll be uh, some of my other project files and a lot of behind the scenes of my workflow. So. Be sure to check out over there. Uh, it's a lot of cool stuff and I'm gonna be posting a lot more as I go through here. So I'm in Blender here. I'm just gonna delete the default cube and this light here. I'm gonna keep the camera there just because I can always move that around later and just add a plane. I'm gonna tab into edit mode and then hit S and five just to scale this up, give a bit of uh, dimension to it. And so what I'm gonna do here is actually add some subdivisions right off the bat to actually start to get a bit more geometry to work with because when you're adding in these displacements you need as much geometry as possible. So I usually like to subdivide twice and then open up this little menu at the bottom here which hopefully you can see behind my head and I'm going to add in 50 cuts to it. Usually I just like to do that. I feel like it gives enough to work with off the bat. I'm going to be throwing another modifier of a subdivision surface over there just to give it a little bit more. And we're really going to crank this one up a bit here so I'm going to move this up to actually four for the viewport and then for the render, um, you can keep it at four or go up to five as well. It's gonna be a bit intensive on your render with all of this extra geometry, especially once you throw on that displacement. But um, I'm gonna be turning this on and off as I go through here just because it really will bog down your viewport once you add in displacements. So I wanna do this all in EV2. There's a couple different methods you can actually add in this displacement. One way is if you're using cycles um, in your shader editor, I'm just gonna show this for example. So if I add a new material, uh, right off the bat, um, Blender has this great principle of BSDF that it adds in, and you'll notice that in the material output, there is a displacement section here. And the way this actually works is by going over to your material settings here, and then going over, uh, where are we here? Oh yeah, so first of all, I need to be in cycles actually for this feature to work. Sorry, now I'm in EV, so switch to cycles. If you go down, you'll see settings, open that up, and you'd think it'd be in displacement, but it's actually down in settings for some reason. There's this displacement thing here, and it's originally always set to bump only. Um, so that will only be affected by what you're plugging into this normal here. But in order to actually have whatever you plug into displacement actually affect as well, you'll need to switch this over to either displacement only. If you're just plugging into the displacement, I recommend actually just using displacement and bumps. So you get effect from normal. But I want to be able to render this in real time in EV just because if you're doing animations, uh, it will render much quicker and you'll um, get some really great results even still just using EV. I think the light looks a lot better in general in Cycles. The way it renders light paths looks a lot, a lot nicer, a lot cleaner, but I digress. Um, so anyway, back to this. I will add in a displacement modifier here. Let's take a second to load up here because we are pretty intensive in our viewport. Let me just turn the subdivisions off for a second here just while I'm working here. Hit new and then click on the sliders and then open. And so I have off screen here, I'm gonna be loading up a world creator texture that I've linked actually in the description. You can go over and download this for free. Again, there's gonna be a lot more available on my website in addition uh, to just this one. So be sure to check out, or sorry, the Patreon. So be sure to check out the Patreon if you want to see a lot more of these textures over there. So I'm loading this up in and you'll see it looks really weird because it is putting it over the local geometry of my plane. So if I go back over to this uh, modifiers tab, you'll see the texture coordinate is local. You want to set that over to UV and now it is going along with the geometry of my plane. It looks really awful with all these polygons here, but keep in mind I've turned off those subdivisions. So if I turn the subdivision surface right back on, it will look pretty cool. And it'll take a second to load up, but you can see, look at that. So this is, again, one I made over in World Creator. I added some really nice uh, displacements, kind of some blowing edges of sand over here. You got these really nice ripples of sand going across the dune, really nice surface. And what I'm noticing is, uh, when I made this over actually in World Creator, 
I extruded it quite a bit here, so I can actually turn down the strength to like, let's say 0.6 instead. This will just flatten my dunes down a bit so that they're not as pointy. You can have this however you want, mess with the scale and have it look uh, really, really vertical. So if I crank this way up, let's put it at three, for example, um, the dunes will be incredibly pointy and usually don't, dunes don't really form like this, uh, just by the way wind blows over the surface. So just for the sake of realism, let's put it down a bit. I'll put it back down 0 0.6, 0 0.65. So this will look much better. So what I'm gonna do here is actually set my camera angle and start setting up the materials and my scene. So one way I like to set my camera very quickly is kind of just orbit around in the 3D viewport. And once I found an angle that I think looks really nice, so I like how this is looking, you're getting this nice view right down the lines of the dunes. Maybe I'll raise it just a little bit more so you see the crest of the dune. And then hit Control, Alt, and Zero, and it will snap your camera to that exact viewpoint. I'll drag over my menu here because I'm gonna make this a rendered mode. And for Instagram, Instagram usually plays very well with 1200 by 1500 resolution. That will show your entire image without cropping it once you're uploading it onto Instagram. Again, you can do whatever you want for the dimensions here. I'm just formatting this for Instagram if you're going over to post there. So let's click on the camera and open up this transform menu because sometimes this Y rotation when you do that snap is a little bit off zero. So I'm just gonna set that back to zero and just make it look a little bit proper. So my focal length is set to 50 millimeters, that's okay. I'm gonna maybe back up just a little bit more so you can see it. And then I don't like how you can see the edge of that dune. I'm gonna be taking care of that in a second, but you can always just hit G to grab and then kind of select certain axes or R to rotate and then shift Z uh, to keep it just so that you're rotating on um, the, along the Z axis. So this is already looking pretty cool. I like how the scene is set up. And again, this was just a couple clicks. Uh, I did a lot of the hard work for you already to make this displacement map over in World Creator. So it's just a matter of bringing that in and making it look nice. So I'm gonna make this a rendered mode, turn on ambient occlusion and screen space reflections in Eevee. And we're gonna add in an HDRI. Uh, I use a lot of free runs from HDRI Haven. Um, there are great resources over there and major thanks to all the people who run that site. You guys do phenomenal work making these awesome HDRIs. But I've got this go-to one here. Um, I can link this in the description as well if you wanna use this particular one. I think it works well for nice, sunny, bright scenes. Um, so I'm just gonna bring that in and then change this to world. And if you have Node Wrangler enabled, what you can do is just click on the texture of the HDRI and then Control T and it automatically adds a mapping and texture coordinate node. And what you can do with this is just use that to rotate your HDRI to get the proper lighting that you want. So I'm just looking at this edge of the dune here uh, and I really want that to be bright and then the side on the left to be in shadow. So I'm gonna rotate this around. I usually like to experiment here a bit just to see. So that's where the main sun source is coming from right there. And that actually looks pretty nice. I might actually use this as my main source. And then what I'd like to do is actually amplify that light with a sun lamp. So I'm gonna add in a sun lamp here, raise this up, lift it in the X axis. So now we've got this really nice, you can really see all the details that I've had in this displacement. And just gonna use that so it's around the same directionality as my HDRI. So I really like how that looks and I'm actually gonna add a little bit of color into this, just make it ever so slightly orange, just because that really amplifies the effect well and then kind of blast it a little bit more. I'm gonna keep that down just a little bit for now. Um, so let's get some textures going here. So there's a great add-on for Blender that is free. It used to not come with Blender, but now in the latest versions, they actually pre-package it with Blender and it is called Blender Kit. I used it in a previous video where I kind of did a walkthrough showing you how to make a really cool architectural scene, but Again, just go to Edit Preferences, Add-on, and type in Blender Kit, and you can enable it, and then it automatically, every single time you load up Blender, will appear right on the right side of your viewport, and it's this Blender Kit, which is great. And it also comes with a lot of 3D models, so all what you're seeing here are categories for 3D models. You can search by free only. I just use the free version. There's more than enough resources in just the free version, I think, alone. There is a paid version as well. I've never actually used that one, but like I said, the free version is great. But for this, I wanna use a material from here just to keep this all free. So usually I use a Quixel for a lot of my materials, but that is a paid site. There are a couple free materials there, but um, just for anyone using Blender, I want this to be accessible to use. So I'm gonna just use some free stuff for this entire tutorial. So let's have some sand. So if I just type in sand here, for example, you'll see it'll take a second. And then we've got a couple different sand textures. This is, I guess, made of sand bricks, okay? 
Um, but you can just scroll through here, just like you're browsing through an online texture catalog, and these look really nice um, and just play very well. All of them are already all rigged up with all the nodes preset, and all you have to do is just click on it, and it adds it to your scene. So what I really like is this um, procedural sand texture here from Angkor Chauhan. Great work with this. So if I just click on that, it'll take a second, and it will load onto my scene. Oops, I need to select my geometry first. So if I just click on that to load up, this will take a second because this is pretty heavy. It will say Blender is not responding for a second here just because of that intense subdivision that I've added on to my scene. So again, just wait here, be patient. 3D is always about patience. There's always time when it will just slow down and bog up your viewport. And I often get a lot of people saying, I can't do 3D because I've got a really old laptop. So I'm using a five-year-old laptop here and it's still been able to handle my scenes pretty well. Definitely need to upgrade at some point soon, but really any computer works. I know people who use MacBooks to do this stuff. That's actually where I started making a lot of my renders was with a MacBook. So just a disclaimer there, any computer works well for 3D in general. Certain ones definitely play better than others, um, but I'm using an old laptop to do this. So it is taking a little bit of time here to load up. I might just speed through this part a bit. Whoa, okay. So I've jockeyed over to sculpt mode, which I did not want to do. So let's go back to object mode. Okay. Let me turn off my subdivisions here for a second. And then, okay, so it added in a different UV map. So I'm not sure why that would have happened, but anyway, let's go back into the viewport. So I've just turned off my subdivisions just for editing and working around here. So this texture actually comes prepackaged with a displacement. So if I go in and show you what the texture looks like and hit tab to show you uh, behind the scenes of this, it actually has a displacement that they've actually plugged in over here that is being fed by some kind of procedural noise. It's got a Verona texture, which actually works really well. Uh, I can talk about this in another video for some of the closer scenes. I often use Verona textures to get some nice kind of rippling effect of the wave of the dunes. But we already have a displacement that works really, really well for uh, this texture. So I'm actually just gonna disconnect that slot, but I do like the colors, this procedural color that they package with this. I think it looks quite nice. And if we were to just zoom in here, you can see um, it's got some nice kind of sand grain looking type stuff to it uh, with some nice bump to it. So I think that looks really great. Um, so I'm just going to keep that as it is. For that, you can always change the base color in here too. This person has done a great job to make a very easy node set up here for you. So it's just a matter of changing a couple parameters. Not all textures are like this from Blender Kit, but I think this one works really nicely for sand. So that is pretty cool. So while I'm here, uh, to kind of fill up my scene, because this is not really with much depth right now, just looking at it, I like to add in some duplicates of this. And you can use actually the same exact dune over and over again, but just kind of offset the rotation or scale it slightly or move it a bit, and it will actually trick your eye into thinking it's a completely different dune. So the way I do that, instead of just duplicating this over and over and over and adding a ton of extra geometry to your scene, I like to hit M while I'm selected on the dune, new collection, and let's just move this to a new collection and call it dune. What that allows me to do now is to go shift A and then instance that dune collection and it will put it right on top of that other dune. So you can just hit G to grab it and then move it back. So if you're looking at it just now, obviously that looks like the same exact dune, but let's just hit R shift Z and then rotate it slightly. And this looks like a completely different setup, which is really cool. I'm noticing that this edge is kind of a bit up there. So I'm just gonna move my camera down a bit here so you don't notice that as much. And let's just rotate it slightly. And I'll move this dune over a bit more to kind of plug that hole in there. So there is the scene. I think that looks pretty nice already. What I'm gonna do actually is to turn off that HDRI. So we just have this nice um, transparent background. And when you take this over to Photoshop or whatever After Effects or editing, you can add in your own custom background there. Um, so I'm just gonna focus on working in the viewport here for now. I'm gonna turn back on that subdivision. Just take a second to load here again, and then you'll be able to see all the details from that dune that we've set up there. So there we go. So that looks really, really nice. And we this took only a couple minutes to really set up and make it look really cool. You've got these great sand ripples to the dune. 
And to make the scene really cool, uh, what I'm going to do is actually add in, let's see, um, I can add in a sun lamp, but actually to make this a little bit neat, let's just use a UV sphere. I'm going to turn off this displacement again, just because the viewport is backing down, but you get the idea. That's what it's going to look like. It's going to look very, very cool once we have this whole scene set up here. So I'm going to add in, I guess, like a sun of sorts here and just make a procedural texture for the sun. And what I want to do actually is set up uh, the viewport so that I can get an idea for composition. So what I'd like to do is click on the camera, go down to viewport display and then composition guides. And you can actually click uh, center and thirds, I think are the most useful ones just to get an idea for how your scene is composed. So there's a bit of dead space here. Let me just lower this down just a little bit. And then I'm going to tilt up just a little bit here so that these dunes take up about two thirds of the viewport. And then this top part will be the sky. And I want to center this up so that it's right on that line there. Lift it up a bit more. And let's make this like a nice red sun. So I'm going to go over and delete the principal BSDF and make this an emission. And click that and set it into the surface. I'm going to turn off viewport guides now that I have an idea for my scene a bit better here. And let's make this like a deep orangish red color and really ramp the strength up a bit here. If you're working in Eevee, you can turn on bloom and it has this nice glow to it. If you're in cycles, it won't have that as much without uh, adding some volumetrics to your scene. Um, but I think that looks pretty nice already. So I haven't saved this yet, so I'm just going to save this so it doesn't crash. I highly recommend that you save as much as possible so that your scene does not crash while you're doing this. So. Because definitely with displacements, you kind of run into a bit of an experimental territory where you can actually have your computer crash a little bit on you. So that's always unfortunate when that happens, so try to prevent that if possible. I also use a site called Unsplash a lot for getting really great background skies and textures and different things like that. So if I go over here, I've got like a whole bunch of really cool skies and different things that I've picked from Unsplash. They're all royalty free. I can link this in the description as well if you want to look it up has a lot of great resources if you're just making Photoshop images, uh, which is where I actually started with my creative journey uh, into the more digital art sphere was with composite images in Photoshop. Now I work almost entirely in 3D with a little bit of influence from Photoshop. Um, but what I like to do here is if this background, I, I'm not as big fan of this HDRI because as you'll notice, it's got palm trees and stuff in it, but the light that it casts, I think is really nice uh, for adding this kind of warm glow to the desert but this guy is not as nice. So what I like to do is if you have this add-on enabled, so if I bring up my preferences here, go to add-ons, and then this is one images as planes. I have it already checked, but you might not if you don't have this checked already. So check that images as planes and then save your preferences. And every time you load up, it'll always be in there. So then hit shift A, slide down to image and then images as planes. If I bring this over here, what I want to do is hit emit when this comes in because it will actually already add in a texture setup with an emission node checked on that. So if I just kind of browse through my skies here uh, to find one that I really like, I think I want to look for like a nice kind of golden, hazy evening sky. Like maybe this contrails one looks kind of cool. It's got this oranges glow up to the blue sky there. So let's start with this one. We can always change it out later. Um, but you'll always have to scale accordingly. Usually the image will come out a bit small in reference to your scene. And sometimes the camera might be clipping a bit here. So let me go to clip start, clip end, and then just really crank this up a bit. Um, and that will make it look better. Um, I'm gonna shade smooth on the sphere just to make it look a bit more uniform. And I'm gonna lift this up. And something that you might notice is that all of a sudden the scene got very dark. And that is because this is casting a shadow, which I do not want. So go over to the uh, transform options here down to visibility. Um, we're actually on a viewport display and then uncheck shadow from that, which will get rid of the shadow from your scene for that. And that should work though. I'm not seeing that taking effect. Usually that takes effect when you do that. Let's see here. Hmm. That is odd. Usually that will get rid of it. Hmm. 
Let's see, let's switch over to cycles. I think this actually might just be a cycles exclusive thing. Visibility, yeah, there we go. Ray visibility, uncheck shadow. That's where I'm looking. So is that only in the cycles thing? I didn't realize that it's just a cycles exclusive. Um, unless this is actually impacting it here. Yeah, it appears that might just be a cycle specific thing. Unless, um, so if you know actually how to do this in EV, please leave a comment in the description because I usually use cycles. This is actually um, my first time really using EV for one of these large scenes. I have used EV more so for motion graphics type things. I just don't think it looks as well for landscapes, but if you were to use this in EV, a lot of the steps are possible. Just this last step here could become a bit strange if you're trying to uh, add in a sky. So if that's the case and it's not working in EV, you can always just add this in and post um, and just kind of color your HGRI so that it works well enough with your scene. So I'll just switch over to cycles while I'm here just because I think it looks a little bit better and more pleasing to the eye for when you're working with textures. So I'm gonna rotate this up just a little bit. So we got this nice kind of orangish haze to the sky. And then I will render this out and we'll join you back up in a second over in Photoshop just to kind of finalize this image. All right, and we are back. That render took 41 minutes and 56 seconds. So not too bad. And this is what it looks like. It's already a really cool result. Um, so usually at this point, what I'll do is export this out and then edit it over in an app like Photoshop. But as I mentioned earlier on in this tutorial, I want to keep this entirely free for those of you who are using Blender free of charge, which is what it is designed to be used as. So there's actually a really great app that was developed and it looks and acts almost exactly like Photoshop. So let me bring this over into the frame here. We've got this great app. It is called PhotoP, PhotoP.com. You can find it there. Really great piece of software and it looks almost exactly like Photoshop. So really cool. And so what I'm actually going to do is just drag and drop the image I exported and there we go. So this is the image uh, right out of Blender. And usually what I like to do is just add a little bit more contrast to my scene. So I'm going to add in a levels adjustment and just drag up the darkest part a little bit. So that kind of gives you a little bit more contrast in those dunes maybe move up the midpoints just a little bit so you get this nice kind of oranges glow to the scene and then kind of blast those highlights just a bit more to get that nice burnt desert sun. So that's already looking pretty cool. I'm gonna add in a brightness and contrast and just ramp it up a little bit more and add a little bit more contrast to it. So I'm actually not liking this as much here as I would have thought. Um, it was just a nice little experimentation. So what I'm actually going to do is duplicate this layer just so I have this as a backup. Just label that there. And then this is my modified layer up here. And what I'm actually going to do is just edit this guy out here using a heel brush. I'm not as big a fan of that. So this happens sometimes as opposed to just going through and re-rendering everything. What I can do is just go very quickly uh, get rid of this guy. So that should take a couple seconds and now it's gone. So not as big a fan of that. So I just kind of want to focus on the scene at hand here. So that's already pretty good. What I might do here is actually add in a curves adjustment layer, lift up the shadows just a little bit off of the 100% uh, black there, add a point in the middle here, bring that up a little bit, add a point here, drop that down just a little bit, add a point here and bring that up just a little bit here too ever so slight with these adjustments. You don't want to overdo it. And if you ever do feel like, for example, this is looking a little bit too intense, you can just go over and drop the opacity for that layer down back. So I, I sometimes what we'll do is just slide these back very quickly just to see the exact effect I'm having on the scene. And I'm liking the contrast that I'm getting from this. I think that looks quite nice. There's another really great adjustment called photo filter here, which can just immediately add in some really great color to your scene. Um, you can actually just choose whatever color you want to impact this. I'm just going to go with a nice kind of orangish, orangish yellow just to really enhance that and then bring the density, the intensity of it back down close to zero. You don't want this all the way up because it looks a little bit too burnt. You might be going for that effect if you're going for something more Martian, but I kind of like how that looks there. I think that's quite nice. So at this point, I mean, we're pretty much done with what I want to go for. You can actually add in a color lookup too, which I think some of these look pretty nice. So they've got some LUTs built in to here and you can kind of just scroll through. It'll take a second to load in 
and you can just kind of go through and see which ones you like. These can kind of add a nice look immediately to your scene if you're interested in trying something out like that. So I kind of like what this one looks like here. It's kind of adding this nice orange red glow to everything, but I'm going to definitely drop that intensity back down. I always just like to ever so slightly have these on. So what I'm going to do is actually select all these adjustments and then hit control G and then I will just rename this to adjustments. So we have these as a nice adjustment layer on top and I can just toggle this on and off. You can see what effect it's having. So whenever I export these out of Blender, there's always pretty much no contrast in the image. It's very low contrast. You can see it's pretty washed out looking, but it's very easy to add all that back in. So I feel like this is already kind of a finished version here. You can always do some more tweaking with this, but this has that kind of nice glow, that nice effect I'm looking for. Just a couple adjustments very quickly. And once again, those adjustments were levels I like to start with just to add a little bit more contrast right off the bat. A bright contrast sometimes just to ramp a little bit more the effects that we're seeing here and add a little bit more, just a touch of contrast. Always just be very delicate with these layers because sometimes you can overdo it and kind of crunch your layer up a little bit too much. It'll look a little bit too washed out. And then I added in a color lookup uh, to get a little bit more of a uh, nice kind of orangish yellow glow to the overall image. Added in that photo filter to add a little bit more of that orange as well too. Again, just being very delicate with that one and then have a curves here where I have adjusted uh, just the highlights and, and, and shadows here, just so they're not clipping uh, there. So that's already pretty great. If you wanted to go a little bit further with this, you could uh, add in a, uh, a another filter, filter gallery or something here. There's some great effects here. Uh, you would have to make this an editable layer. So what I would do here is select my modified, select all of these, uh, command J, and then I wanna actually just merge all these into one layer. So we have this adjusted layer. And I'll take this out of this group here. So if you want to bring on another layer, you can go to filter, filter gallery here, and then you can add in some cool effects here as well. So I'm not going to mess around with that as much because I don't really like how that looks, but it's a, it's a nice effect here. So, so there you go. That is the final image. And we started with the very nice, simple displacement that I made over in world creator, brought that into blender. And just with a couple clicks, we already have a really great scene. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you guys like this longer format. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more. I'll be making more of these tutorials in the near future. So I want you to be clued in and in the know when these new videos come out so that you can follow along and make some great artwork. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I will see you on the next one.